All right, hello everybody, and today we're going to be deriving Legendre's duplication formula. So let's just jump straight into it. We're going to be taking a look at a function that I've discussed in a previous video, namely the beta function. Um, I've derived a integral representation for this beta function as well. And in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a specific case of the beta function, namely beta of z and z. So both of our inputs right here are the exact same thing. And well, what exactly is this? Well, we can write this in terms of gamma functions because remember beta of two variables is exactly gamma of the first variable, z, times gamma of the second variable, which is also z, divided by gamma of the sum of these two arguments right here. And in this case, we have z plus c, which is just 2z like so. And notice we have two gammas being multiplied on the numerator right here. I'm just gonna rewrite this as gamma squared of z just to make things look a bit nicer so gamma squared of z over gamma of 2z like so so this is our beta of z and z in terms of gamma functions then already you can see where i guess the name duplication comes in um, from Legendre's duplication formula because we have this gamma of 2z right here and that's going to pop up in our equation later on so we have our beta function in terms of gamma functions. Now let's actually write it in terms of an integral. So if we rewrite our beta function in terms of an integral, I've derived this in a previous video. You can probably click right here for that video or the video will be linked in the description. It's just the integral from zero to one of let's choose a variable, let's call it t. So we have t to the first argument minus one times one minus z um, or 1 minus t to the second argument, which is also z minus 1, dt like so. All right, so we have this expression right now, and uh, notice we have the same power on both of these terms, I guess. So all we can do is we can kind of factor it out. So we can have the product of t and 1 minus t inside one big bracket, so t, 1 minus t like so, and all of that raised to the z minus 1, and then dt like so. All right, and now I want to make a bit of a substitution because notice we have t and we have one minus t. And um, I want to kind of transform this into something a little bit more symmetrical. Notice um, our upper and lower bounds as well. I want to turn that into a symmetric interval for reasons that will be clear later on. So I'm going to be introducing a particular substitution. Let's choose a new variable. Um, tau for example and we're going to make that equal to the difference of these two so t minus 1 minus t okay and what exactly is that well we have negative negative t which is just adding another t so we have 2t overall and then we still have this minus 1 all right and now we can rearrange things a little bit to kind of solve for our t. So this means that if you add 1 on both sides and divide by 2 we have that t is equal to tau plus 1 divided by 2 and I'm actually going to write this as um, 1 plus tau instead so 1 plus tau divided by 2 so that's going to take care of this part for us and now how about 1 minus t well 1 minus t um, we can just derive it um, directly from here so 1 minus t is exactly 1 minus 1 plus tau over 2 and now our 1 here that's exactly 2 over 2 so just putting things in the common denominator now we can carry on from here so we have 2 minus 1 which is just 1 and then we have negative tau right here and then that's still divided by 2 so in fact 1 minus t is this expression right here which looks pretty similar to our expression for t which is quite nice and that's what I was talking about with the symmetry that I was trying to get it's now for our differential, our dt right here. All we have to do from this line, for example, is just differentiate both sides, which means that our dt is equal to, we have tau divided by two right here. So we're gonna have one half d tau. All right, we have all of this information now. Let's just chuck it back into our integral. So now we have the integral. Let's figure out our bounds as well. If we plug a zero into here, for example, so this is, tau in terms of t. If we plug 0 into here, we're going to get negative 1 because this is going to go to 0. So negative 1. And if we plug 1 into here, well, 2 times 1 is 2 minus 1 is exactly 1. All right. And now let's put some big brackets around right here. And all of that is still raised to the z minus 1. Remember, z is kind of like a constant in this case because we're not integrating with respect to z. We're integrating with respect to t. 
So what goes inside right here? We have our t, but remember our t is 1 plus tau over 2. So we have 1 plus tau over 2, and then 1 minus t, that's exactly 1 minus tau over 2. So we have 1 minus tau over 2 like so, and our dt becomes 1 half d tau like so. All right, very nice. And now um, let's rub this stuff out. We actually don't need it anymore. And we're gonna carry on trying to integrate this thing from here. And later we're gonna be seeing something quite nice actually. So um, first of all, what exactly can we do? I'm going to kind of split things off a little bit here because notice we have two twos at the bottom right here. So this is overall still equal to, um, if we kind of bring the twos out to the front, we're going to have one over two to the z minus one. And we're also gonna have another two, so two to the z minus one. That's those two parts taken care of. And then um, let's bring this one half out to the front as well. So we have one over two. And then integral from negative one to one of, and now we're left with a one plus tau times one minus tau on the inside. So one plus tau times one minus tau. Um, and all of this is still raised to the z minus one power. Then we have a d tau. And notice the reason why we tried to get things a bit more symmetrical right here is because of this right here. We have a difference of two squares. Well, not really. We have kind of the reverse of that because we have kind of like a plus b and a minus b right here, which we can turn into difference of two squares. So now um, let's actually clean things up a little bit right here. First of all, let's flip each of those fractions right there. And to do that, we're just going to multiply this exponent by negative one. So we're going to have two to the one minus z. So I just multiplied a negative one into the exponent right here. And we have another one, two to the one minus z. And then a half is just two to the minus one. And then now, um, yeah, we have our integral from negative one to one. We have this inside right here is gonna turn into one minus tau squared to the z minus one d tau. And now notice one cool thing. This integrand right here is actually an even integrand because if we plug a negative value of tau into here, this squared thing will turn it into positive. So it's actually symmetric across the y-axis. So what we can actually do, since we have symmetrical bounds right here, which is really quite nice, that's what we're aiming for with that substitution, we can actually split this interval in half. So we're gonna integrate from zero to one, but because this thing is an even function, we're actually cutting the area in half. So to compensate for that, we have to multiply everything by two. And I'm just gonna multiply a two into here, so two detail. And um, now what can we do from here? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to introduce a new substitution. And I'm going to let a new variable be equal to this tau squared right here. And um, something really cool will happen after we do the substitution. So let's just put it over here. If we let phi be equal to tau squared, then if we differentiate both sides, d phi is equal to two tau d tau. And um, well, later we're gonna be subbing this back into here. So let's get everything in terms of five for now. From the substitution, we can say that our tau is equal to the square root of phi or phi to the one half power, which means that our d phi is equal to tau, which is phi to the one half times two d tau. And overall, if we isolate this two d tau right here, we have this two d tau that I kind of kept from that other part right there. We're going to have that 2d tau is equal to, bring this phi to the one half to the other side, we're gonna have phi to the negative a half, d phi like so. So that's our um, substitution pretty much done. So let's plug this back into here. So now we're going to get, let's clean these twos up a little bit as well. Since we have the same base right here and we're multiplying everything together, we just simply add the exponent. So we have one plus one minus one, which will give us one and then we have minus z minus z which is just a minus 2z like so then now we have the integral if we plug zero into here tau is going to be zero which means um our phi will be zero and plugging one into here phi will be one so our bounds are preserved which is nice and now we're going to have one minus tau squared we said was phi so we're going to have one minus phi this thing still raises to the z minus one and our 2d phi well, 2d phi is exactly phi to the negative a half times d phi. So I'm gonna put it right here. Phi to the negative one half times d phi. 
and um, maybe you see it, maybe you don't, but this is actually another beta function, which is really quite nice. So I might make this clear for you. This is the same thing as 2 to the 1 minus 2z in school from 0 to 1 of now negative a half right here. Notice that that's exactly 1 half minus 1 and then everything remains the same. So 1 minus phi to the z minus 1 z phi and this is actually the beta function of 1 half. So you have this 1 half right here and z because we have this 1 half minus 1 and z minus 1 and everything's still pretty much the same. So what did we just figure out from here? We just showed that um, all of this stuff, remember we started off with our beta function as an integral. So this beta function is actually equal to 2 to the 1 minus 2z beta function of 1 half and z. So beta function of 1 half and z. And uh, well, we basically just showed that, um, yeah, beta of z and z is the exact same thing as 2 to the 1 minus 2z beta of 1 half z like so. And um, that's a pretty cool result, but um, we can actually make this a little bit more spicy, I guess, simply just by rewriting our beta functions as gamma functions. And that's actually how we're going to get our Lagrange duplication formula. So beta of z and z, we already know it's this expression right here. So we have, um, let's just put it um, over here. I think they'll work out. So we have gamma squared of z over gamma of 2z. And that's equal to 2 to the 1 minus 2z. And then rewriting this beta function in terms of gamma functions, we're going to have first of all gamma of a half. So gamma of a half and gamma of z right here. And this is divided by gamma of the sum of these two. So gamma of z plus a half like so. And notice on both sides of this equation right here, we have gamma of z. So we can actually cancel some gammas out right here. So this squared thing will disappear and this gamma right here will disappear. And um, what other things do we have? We have a gamma of 2z, which we can't really simplify any further. We have gamma of z plus a half, which we can't really simplify any further. How about this gamma of one half? What exactly is gamma of one half? Maybe you know this result already, but this is pretty much square root of pi. And you can actually derive that quite easily. I've made a video on the Euler reflection formula actually. Notice that in gamma of a half, I'll put it over here. So in gamma of a half, that's exactly the same as gamma squared of a half, but inside of a square root. So we're just squaring something and taking the square root. And well, something squared is just that something times itself. So we have a gamma of a half times the gamma of a half. And as well, notice one half is the exact same thing as a one minus a half. So if we do a replacement right there, we're gonna have one minus a half. And uh, hey, that's in the exact same form as our Euler reflection formula actually. So this is actually the square root of pi over the sine of pi times a half. Link to the um, Euler reflection formula will be up here somewhere again. Um, you can check that out if you want to know how that thing's derived. Um, but so yeah, sine of pi times a half, that's exactly sine of pi over two, which is just one. So this is overall just the square root of pi. So this gamma of a half right here is square root of pi. And uh, overall, what did we just find? Well, um, let's actually do one more step. Let's bring this gamma onto the other side and this gamma onto the other side as well. Leaving us with, we have our gamma of z still on the left hand side right here. So we have gamma of z. And then we're bringing this gamma onto the other side. So we're gonna multiply that by gamma of z plus a half. And that's equal to two to the one minus two z. And then we have our square root of pi right here. This gamma cancel out with one of the gammas over here. And now we're bringing this in gamma of 2z onto the other side. So we have gamma of 2z. And um, that is pretty much it. That is the Legendre duplication formula or Legendre's duplication formula. I really don't know how to say that guy's name. But yeah, there we go. That's the formula right there. It's a pretty cool formula. It's one of those formulas where you can reduce the product or quotient of two gamma functions into a nice gamma function. Just like with the um, Euler reflection formula right here. If you have two gammas with the arguments in this form right here, you can reduce that down to a nice closed form. So yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone later. Bye bye.